Hi everyone. In this video, we shall begin writing the Verilog code for multiplexer. We saw the four Verilog coding styles in the earlier video. Let us see how to code using the styles at the lowest level of abstraction, that is the switch level, and then at the gate level modeling in this video. At the lowest level of abstraction is the switch level modeling. Here, you need to implement your circuit using transistors. For a multiplexer, the transistor level design is as follows. It is implemented by using two transmission gates C1 and C2. A transmission gate is a parallel combination of N MOS and P MOS connected such that the input at the gate of one transistor, let us call it control, is complementary to the input at the gate of the other transistor. The transmission gate acts as a bidirectional switch which is controlled by the gate signal control CTRL. When the control signal is high, the NMOS is on. Since control bar is zero, the PMOS is also on. And the transmission gate connects the input to the output. Using this transmission gate, we can create the multiplexer. Here, when the select line is high, transmission gate C2 conducts input 2 to the output, while when select line is 0, the transmission gate C1 conducts in 1 to the output. The same design is coded in Verilog as follows. We have declared the output port out, the inputs being input 1, input 2 and select line and a wire W that holds the negation of our select line and for getting the logical knot of the select line cell you can observe that you must be having detailed design knowledge to implement the circuit at switch level. So this is rarely been used nowadays since the circuits are getting complex and describing it at this detail is extremely difficult. So the next level of abstraction is the gate level modeling. Here, the circuit is implemented in terms of logic gates and their interconnections. For a multiplexer, we saw the logical expression in the previous video. This expression can be easily converted to gate level design as follows. S1 bar, S0 bar, I0. So S1 bar, S0 bar, I0 is the output for of this NAND gate. The second term is the output of this NAND gate and the third is for this and the fourth is for this term. These four are odd to get, obtain our output Y. Gate level modeling works best for circuit having limited number of gates. It allows the designer to instantiate and connect each gate individually so that he can have full control on the manner in which the design is synthesized. Now, let us write the Verilog code for the multiplexer in this level of modeling. While writing Verilog code, we shall be using built-in primitives provided by Verilog for the gates. Let us open our EDA playground. Let us start writing the Verilog code on the EDA playground. The module name being max 4 is to 1 gate level with 4 inputs, 2 select lines and 1 output. Let us declare the input ports I0, I1, I2 and I3. The select lines S0 and S1 which are also the inputs followed by the output port out. Now we shall begin writing the design. We shall start with defining the four AND gates for these min terms. Output of AND gate, first AND gate A0 is T1 and its inputs are I0, S1 bar and S0 bar. We should also generate S1 bar and S0 bar from the inputs S1 and S0. Let us do that first by instantiating two NOT gates. NOT gate N1 with out one, output being S0 bar and the input S0 and the NOT gate N2 with output S1 bar and input S1. Now we shall write the code for the first AND gate. AND A1 
whose output is t1, input is i0, s1 bar and s0 bar. Second AND gate a1 with output t2, input i1, s1 bar, s0. AND gate a3 with output t3 and inputs i2, s1 and s0 bar. The last AND gate a4 with output T4 and inputs I3, S1, S0. Now that we have them in terms T1, T2, T3 and T4 of this expression, let us OR them to get the output using an OR gate whose output is OUT and the inputs are the four terms T1, T2, T3 and T4. Note that we have used many wires in between which are not declared as ports and we have to explicitly define them. Those are S0 bar, S1 bar and these four terms T1, T2, T3 and T4. Let us declare them as wires. Now that the Verilog code is ready, let us write the test bench and verify the design. To save the time, I have copied the test bench code. Let us bring it here. Here we are instantiating the max 4 is to 1 gate level design under test and connecting them to the signals which to which we'll be giving the stimulus. Since we'll give stimulus to I0, I1, I2 and I3 input terminals, we have declared them as registers and also for the select lines, so they are also declared as registers and we will be observing the output out, so it is declared as a wire. To these values, the inputs and the select lines, the stimulus is provided within the initial block. We have used a monitor statement to display the output in the logs and random assignments to i0, i1, i2 and i3 being 0, 1, 0, 1 the inputs to the max and for the select lines we have chosen 0, 0, 1, 0 and 1, 1 after a time step of 10 each. Let us now save this test bench code as well as the design code and run the design. You can see in the logs that at timestamp 0 when select line is 0, the output must be i0 which is 0. When the select line is 1 0 at time 10, the output must be i2 that is again 0. At time 20 when the select line is 1 1, the output must be i3 which is 1. You can view the same in the waveform as well. So at time 0 till time 20 when select line was 0 and 2 the output is 0 and finally at time 20 when select line became 3 the output became 1. We have successfully completed writing the code for multiplexer and verified its design using EDA playground. Let us now convert this code into a design that can be implemented on hardware. It can either be taped out into an application specific integrated circuit or implemented on FPGA. Let us go for the FPGA approach. Remember the steps in digital system design that we saw in the introductory video? Let us now go about these steps and see how they are done practically. Since EDA Playground, since EDA Playground does not support the implementation steps, I shall show you these steps in Vivado. Let us copy this code to Vivado. Let us keep this design as a simulation source in Vivado and perform the next steps. After the RTL is verified, the next step is the synthesis. It is a step where the RTL code is mapped and optimized to the target technology. What we refer to as synthesis has multiple steps. In Vivado, also it is implemented as elaborated design followed by synthesis. In elaborated design, it includes reading the RTL file and recognizing the bits of codes in your RTL and representing them as real hardware structures like registers, adders, comparators, multiplexers, etc. The elaborated design shows you how you, your RTL code got interpreted in hardware. 
Let us open the elaborated design for our circuit. As you can see, this is the elaborated design. The gate level design that we intended was this. The three input AND gates that you see here are replaced by two two input AND gates. And therefore, the four AND gates that we required are now converted into eight two input AND gates. And the four input OR gate is represented by three two input OR gates. So you can see the similarity between the design that you intended, elaborated design or the schematic that we obtained. In the next step that Vivado calls synthesis, it applies constraints to this elaborated design and does optimization on the design and maps to the target technology. Let us run synthesis. This is the netlist generated after synthesis. Here you can see a lot of coordinates x0, y1, x1, y1 and so on. These are actually the coordinates of logic slices within the FPGA. So what is a logic slice? A logic slice is a configurable logic block within the FPGA consisting of lookup tables, flip-flop, multiplexers, carry chains, etc. So in the netlist, it has shown the available logic blocks for implementing our design, that is the max. You can also see the schematic after synthesis has shown how it has used one lookup table to generate our max output. The next step is to run the implementation after the synthesis. In the implementation step, the synthesized netlist or the design that we obtained from the synthesis step is mapped to physical resources like the RAM, lookup table, DSP slices of the target FPGA shown and the implementation also includes more logical and power optimizations also does the placement and routing to give us the implemented design. In the netlist that we obtained for synthesis we saw that we would require only one lookup table. Now this lookup table will get mapped to one of the available logic blocks in the FPGA and that would be the output of the implementation. You can see here in this implemented design it has selected one, one CLB that is at position x8 y4 x9 y4 to implement our design. After implementation you can view the reports and see the utilization of the resources in the CP of the resources in your FPGA. As you can see, we have not used any of the registers or the flip flops or the latches because it was just a combinational circuit. But we have used one CLB lookup table as a logic, not as a memory, because the entire max logic is was implemented within one lookup table. You can get a detailed report of the utilization. Since this was just the simple circuit, we haven't utilized any resources. In the imp implementation step, you can also check the power consumed. And if you have a assigned power budget, it also, spe it also checks against it. You can also check the timing if it is violating any of the constraints. Once the implementation step is completed, the last step is to flash your code onto the target board. And this is done by generating a bit stream. We are not doing that right now. So since this was our first code, I have showed the entire process from coding on the EDA playground and simulating, followed by elaboration step, followed by synthesis, and then the implementation. From the next video onwards, we will just see the coding in EDA Playground and verification by writing a test bench. I will just show you the elaborated design which I would have obtained by pre-running it on Vivado. So in the next video, we will see data level and behavioral modeling of multiplexer. If you feel any difficulty 
in following the concepts please let us know in the comment section do like the video if it was useful thank you